this is Dr. Pratiksha here, junior resident at Department of Anesthesiology at Goa Medical College. Today we're going to talk about local anesthetics. Local anesthesia is commonly used as a part of regional anesthesia. So local anesthesia results from blockade of nerve impulses to abolish any sensation. If you're going to see a chemical structure of a local anesthetic, we have an aromatic end, an intermediate chain, which links the aromatic end to a tertiary amine end. Depending on the intermediate chain, we have two classification or two broad categories of local anesthetics. It could either be an amino amide or it could be an amino ester. In amino esters, we have procaine, chloroprocaine and tetracaine. While in amino amides, we have lignocaine, bupivacaine, ropivacaine, livobupivacaine, mepivacaine and prilocaine. Coming to its mechanism of action, broadly all the local anesthetics act function in a similar way. They block the sodium voltage gated sodium channels. So hence the influx of the sodium is prevented, thus causing any blockage of the nerve impulses, which happens at the cardiac end, cardiac, neuronal, also central nervous system end. Thus, there is no impulse or there is condu complete conduction block. Now, a potency of any local anesthetic depends on its lipophilicity. That is how lipid soluble is the drug or how lipid soluble is that local anesthetic. So we have a low potency, short acting local anesthetics like procaine. Then we have intermediate and intermediate duration of action like lignocaine and a high potency and a longer duration of action like bupivacaine. It's essential to understand that all these local anesthetics are absolutely not water soluble. And that's the reason why we have our local anesthetics in its hydrochloride salt formulation. So if you go to see this 2% of lignocaine is available as lignocaine hydrochloride salt. Now another feature that these uh, local anesthetics have is if the pH is reduced, it becomes acidic and acidic pH is always essential to keep the local anesthetic stable. Apart from that, a, a low pH also helps the catecholamine stability. For that example, we have local anesthetic lignocaine 2% with 5 micrograms per ml or 1 in 2 lakh of adrenaline added but this solution is made acidic with addition of another preservative that is potassium metabisulfide which makes the pH of this solution even more acidic at around pH of 4. Hence, this solution again becomes more stable. Further, in order to avoid any oxidative decomposition, Certain local anesthetics are available in amber colored bottles like this 2% lignocaine with adrenaline and this preparation of viscous solution is also available in amber colored bottle. Now the choice of anesthesia for various regional anesthetic procedures varies. We could have an IVRA that is intravenous regional anesthesia. We could have infiltration anesthesia, peripheral nerve block, central neural blockade like in case of a spinal, epidural, caudal which is a form of epidural anesthesia used in majority of the pediatric age group and topical anesthesia. So I'm going to talk about this lignocaine preparations available in ROR and how can it be used. To start with we have lignocaine hydrochloride also uh, traded as loxicard. Uh, this is 2% lignocaine which is used for IV purpose. So if you go to see the box and the vial itself has this indication for IV use. In our day to day life, in our ORs, we use this while we load our propofol. Propofol per se at the site of injection causes pain. Hence, 1 cc of lignocaine which is used for IV purpose only is added to propofol. It's essential to identify that this particular lignocaine preparation has no preservative, hence it can also be used intrathecally. Whenever any drug is introduced into CSF or intravascular, it is essential to ensure it has no preservative added. 
because majority of the allergic reactions to the uh, local anesthetics usually happens because of the preservative added to it. It's also used for IVRA, that is our intravenous regional anesthesia, also known as Beer's block, where a tourniquet is tied at the two ends where local anesthesia is supposed to be achieved and intravascularly this drug is administered. From the vascular space, it extravasates into the surrounding tissue where it is non-vascular and anesthetizes the neurons or the area which needs to be anesthetized. Mind you, there is always a tunicate tied so as to avoid any systemic circulation of this local anesthetic injected. Second in the line, we have lignocaine with adrenaline. It's a 2% lignocaine with adrenaline of 1 in 2 lakh preparation which amounts to around 5 microgram per ml. What are the other components? Lignocaine hydrochloride, as mentioned earlier, all our local anesthetics are available as hydrochloride salts. We have adrenaline, which amounts to 0.05 milligrams, that is 5 micrograms per ml. We have potassium metabisulfide and methyl parabene as a preservative. This makes the solution acidic, hence it enables the stabilization of this particular solution. Notice the color of the vial. It's an amber colored vial to avoid any oxidative decomposition on exposure to light. Unlike this IV lignocaine hydrochloride which had no preservative and hence its only lignocaine hydrochloride has no um, adrenaline in it. Hence, there is no worry about stabilizing this or worry about its oxidative decomposition. Unlike in this preparation, we have adrenaline, that's a catecholamine, which requires stabilization and a pH which is lower. Now, the 2% lignocaine with adrenaline is commonly used as infiltration anesthesia. This is care has to be taken that it's not infiltrated at end arteries, which we have the dorsum of the nose and the penis. It's also used as test dose for our epidural anesthesia. So if at all the epidural catheter is in the intrathecal space, there will be anesthetizing or a rapid onset of uh, anesthesia. And if at all it's intravascular, the adrenaline present in the 2% lignocaine with adrenaline will cause rising BP and tachycardia, hence help us or guide us identify wrong placement of the catheter. Apart from that, this can also be used for nebulization, that is for airway anesthesia, can also be used for peripheral nerve blocks, the solution which can be made along with bupivacaine. The solution can also be used um, where a cotton can be soaked with uh, this solution and can be used in the upper airway to anesthetize the nostrils or uh, can be pushed a little bit further, nasal packing can be done with this to anesthetize the nasopharyngeal airway. Next, coming to 4% of topical lignocaine. This is again available at, uh, in amber colored uh, vial for its stability again, to avoid any oxidative decomposition on exposure to light. This is available as a 4%. When I say it's 4%, that means each ml of this lignocaine in a 4% of uh, vial, will give me around 42.7 milligrams. So each cc is equivalent to 42.7 milligrams of lignocaine hydrochloride salt. It also consists of um, preservative. It has methyl parabene. So here it's only used for topical. Um, some of the uh, ENT surgeons or ENT procedures, they use it for infiltration also. But if you see when we say a topicalization, use of any anesthetic for topicalization, we use it on intact membrane or an intact skin. It can also be used for infiltration. Next on the list, we have a 2% of lignocaine, but this one consists of a preservative. Here preservative is methyl parabene. Have a look at both these vials. This is a 20 ml solution, this is a 50 ml solution. Uh, vial 50 ml and a 20 ml vial both of them are uh, transparent in color but this one consists of a lignocaine hydrochloride which amounts to 21.3 milligrams 
followed by sodium chloride which is 6 mg and methyl parabene of 1 mg which is a preservative. This cannot be used, this cannot be used intravascularly. But this can be given epidurally, can be given for infiltration as long as you identify that there is no aspiration for blood, negative aspiration for blood at the site of injection. Um, in our ORs, we also use this for preparation of airway by using it in nebulization. We can also use this for um, as a transtracheal for transtracheal, but after only after ensuring that we have had negative aspiration for blood. Next in the list, we have lignocaine viscous solution, which is a two percent solution consisting of. Each ml of this lignocaine viscous solution will have 20 milligrams of lignocaine hydrochloride, methyl parabene of 0.61 as its preservative, and propyl parabene as its second preservative. Apart from that, it has a flavored viscous base. Now, this is used for gargles and for um, numbing the oral cavity where the patient will have to ingest or take the solution in in their mouth rinse the mouth with this or go for gargles with this commonly this is used for oral procedures to anesthetize the posterior pharyngeal walls when we are going in for awake intubation or for any biopsy in the oral cavity next in the list we have 10 percent lignocaine spray that means each puff is going to give 100 milligrams of lignocaine now this is again uh, having another additive that is our ethanol so as to make its absorption rapid so on um, applying it on intact skin especially the mucous membrane it gets absorbed rapidly and it's uh, since its amount is high not a large uh, amount has to be sprayed each ml gives around 100 milligrams or each puff gives around 100 milligrams so within one or two puffs, you are anesthetizing majority of the uh, mucous membrane. So if I'm speaking of mu mucous membrane, that means it's used in oral cavity, in the nasopharyngeal area to anesthetize the airway, or it can also be used when we're taking any biopsy from these sites or for examination purpose, when we are doing an IDL or when we are doing any nasal examination or nasopharyngeal examination. Next, we're going to talk about lignocaine jelly, which is a 2% jelly. Now, this solution is, um, it says it's hydro, uh, lignocaine hydrochloride equivalent to anhydrous lignocaine hydrochloride, 2% weight by volume. It's essential to remember, it's 2% weight by volume. Another uh, preservative which is added to this is our methyl parabene, propyl parabene, and it's a water-soluble gel base in purified water. It's used usually to as a lubricant at, at the same time it causes anesthetization. So it's used to pass a Foley's catheter to lubricate the entire tract before passing Foley's catheter, before passing any Ryle's tube. Um, apart from that it's also when we are doing a proctoscopy for a patient it's uh, very much applied on the proctoscope and then the proctoscope is inserted into the um, anus of the patient while we are examining the patient. Next, coming to something known as EMLA. EMLA means eutactic mixture of local anesthetic. So here we have something, a trade name called Prilox. It's called Lignocaine and Prilocaine Cream. So I'm going to talk about how do we use this. So this consists of occlusive dressing. This is going to be used as my occlusive dressing. We have the ointment, Lignocaine with Prilocaine ointment. And we have uh, an applicator. So the area which needs to be anesthetized, I'm going to apply a generous amount of 2 to 3 millimeters of thickness with this lignocaine and prelocaine ointment. With the applicator, I'm going to spread it across where I want to apply it. And over that, I'm going to apply this occlusive dressing, which is actually a peel on, a peel off, sorry. It's a peel off dressing. It's an occlusive dressing at the side where I have applied lignocaine, I'm going to place it over that. After I place this, I'm going to keep it for around 1 to 3 hours and just before my surgery or just before I'm going to pass an IV cannula, I'm going to remove this occlusive dressing 
and I'm going to do the procedure that the patient has to undergo. Just a quick look at a concept called PKA and its clinical application. So a local anesthetic in its solution form is always in a very rapid equilibrium between its basic uncharged and its cationic charged form. So at a pH which is equal to its PKA, the drug will be available in equal concentrations of its charged and uncharged part. So the uncharged part of the local anesthetic is the one which will take part in blocking the voltage gated sodium channels. So if the surrounding of the tissue where you have given the local anesthetic has a pH which is acidic, it will have uh, the local anesthetic will be available more in form of its charged form which will not have its action at the site of injection. Hence, when we have a case of cellulitis or patient having inflamed area, when we give a local anesthetic at that site, the action is relatively poor and the amount of local anesthetic that you will have to inject will be more. And has it had to enter into the systemic circulation, we will end up with something known as local anesthetic systemic toxicity. Coming to lignocaine, I'm going to talk a little bit more in depth about lignocaine. It has a PKF of 7.8 to 7.9, where around 33% of its fraction is available in uncharged form. The duration of its action is 60 to 120 minutes and onset of action is rapid. Its T half is 96 minutes. Being an amino amide, its metabolism is primarily by hepatic P450, that is cytochrome P450 linked enzymes. Its dosage is essential to remember because based on that, you will use or the quantity of the preparations of these lignocaine you will identify. So if the lignocaine is available plain, that is without adrenaline, around 3.5 to 4.5 milligram per kg is the dosage. But if you have adrenaline added to the solution, like in case of 2% lignocaine with adrenaline, you can go from 6 to 7 milligram per kg. We've known a lot about the local anesthesia part of lignocaine. Now, lignocaine is a very special drug. It has its own miscellaneous uses. Coming to miscellaneous uses of lignocaine, apart from being a local anesthetic, lignocaine can also be used as an antiarrhythmic. It belongs to class 1B of antiarrhythmics. Uh, blocking the sodium voltage gated sodium channels. So if we are using as an antiarrhythmic, it's majority of the times used for ventricular arrhythmias, where a bolus of two milligram per kg is given, followed by one to four milligram per minute as an infusion. So when we are using as an antiarrhythmic, we use the IV, the one without any preservative, this one over here. Apart from that, for we also use lignocaine as a um, to attenuate the pressure response during extubation in a dosage of 1.5 mg per kg. As a part of ACLS protocol, lignocaine is the second line drug apart from amiodarone. So it's used in as of the first dose is 1.5, 1 to 1.5 mg per kg. And the second dose is 0 0.5 to 0 0.75 milligram per kg. And in case of an emergency situation where you do not have an IV axis, but a patient has come with a ventricular arrhythmia, you can definitely use this lignocaine intramuscularly. But the dosage will be 4 to 5 milligrams per kg and onset of action will be relatively um, uh, slower than IV.